parents. You can't live without them. Like, I am thankful for my parents for many reasons, but there was one area where they absolutely sucked monkey balls. Buying video games. Raise your hand if you ever got a video game for Christmas or your birthday that wasn't necessarily the best. But to be honest, we can't really blame them because they didn't have much to go with when deciding if a video game was bad or not. Like usually, the only source they had was the cover box itself and the text that was on the backside and a few small pictures. So it wasn't really their fault, but still, we were the one who suffered. And god damn, we suffered. Like, can you imagine the scars you would have for getting games like Zoom or Dracula for the Sega Game Gear? Oh, I'm coming back to you. Or Sonic? Wait, Sonic? You're awesome! Get out of here! Oh, oh, mom, it wasn't me! Now, this is a story of yet another faithful Christmas, where my parents bought me a memorable video game. Let's rewind time to the year of 1994. The Simpsons was already headed into their sixth season and was in their absolute prime time at the moment. And as a result of that, there was a bunch of Simpsons games released for the home consoles. And out of all the games, all the Simpsons games that was released, they bought me Bart vs. the Space Mutants. Now, let's be honest, they could have bought me any of the Simpsons games that was released by the time, and it wouldn't make any difference, because they all sucked farts from a bottle. But out of all those doodos, they bought the golden doodoo, the one dookie to rule them all. At first glance, the game doesn't really look too bad. The graphics are nice, and the music is cool. The controls? I'll get back to the controls. Your goal in the first level is to make everything purple disappear, so you venture through the level making everything purple into red, either by spray painting it or just covering it. Wait, what? You cover the objects? Like, that just baffles my mind, like it doesn't even make any sense. Okay, so if I take this purple candy and I put it in my hand and I just like cover it like this. It's still purple! Uh, but Cress, how can you know it's still purple when you can't see it anymore? That's why. What?! You also have some glasses, which makes you able to detect the aliens who roam the streets, and you can jump on their head to earn a token towards spelling Maggie's name. If you get every token, Maggie will help you out with the stage boss later. If you jump on someone who isn't an alien, you take damage. So you travel through the level, spray painting stuff, using items like rockets and bombs to make everything purple into red. I do have to give the game a lot of props for creativity though. Like the fact that you have to prank call Mo to make him come outside so you can paint him red. They also added a lot of variety for the prank calls as well. That is a nice touch right there. So you venture forward till you get to a statue with a bird on it, and you have to use the rocket to get rid of the bird, and as a response, the statue talks to you. Victory comes to those that get a head? What? I'm not going there. As we get further into the level, the more platform jumping is required, and now it's time to talk about the big, giant, all-consuming elephant in the room. The goddamn controls. They are beyond horrible. It's impossible to even understand how bad they are until you try it yourself. First of all, the jump button and the run button is the same button. I get that the Sega controller had limitations with the number of buttons, but come on! It is beyond horrible. If you're used to playing Super Mario where you can run to be able to jump further, then damn, this will make you cry right here. So to run, you need to jump first. Well, make sure there isn't a f***ing ledge somewhere then so you end up jumping up instead. 
And when I do want to run, I end up jumping instead because I forget how f***ing horrible these controls are. Like, right here, I needed to run to get away, but I can't run, can I, without jumping first? God damn it! But then again, you don't really want to run in this game anyway, as it is a death trap if you do. So, how do you do a faster long jump then? Well, by pressing button A and button B at the same time. Like, have you ever tried to press two buttons on a Genesis controller at the same time while playing a video game? It's f easier to do the pilot test, you know, where you have to tap your head and do belly rubs at the same time. That is actually easier than to do a normal jump in Bart versus the Space Mutants. Like, what a f***ing cruel joke. What a cruel joke. <sighs> Anyways, eventually you will get rid of everything purple and it's time to meet the stage boss, which is Nelson who keeps throwing rocks at you. With the help of Maggie, a few balls to the face will do the trick and it's on to the next level. The space mutants have to rely on plan B now and this time you need to get rid of all the hats in the level. The second stage takes place in a shopping mall and you are attacked by lifeguard rescuing rings and have to traverse these big areas of cement. And now you will really start to feel how the controls aren't really the best. A little fun fact, this was as far as I got when I was a kid. I could never traverse this area, which means that I played about one and a half levels of the game in total. And you want to know another fun fact? This was as far as I could get as an adult. I just... I can't get past this jumping area. I just can't and I fucking try my best, I swear. I'm not sure there is any other way of doing this and as far as I know there is no level skip code in this game. Well, damn. That is all I can show you of the game, but to be honest, it's okay. I don't make these videos to give you a full playthrough of the game. I make them to show you the struggles I grew up with and how I experienced them as a kid. But god damn, I still want to make some actual progress and actually beat the game that I never beat as a kid. But this one? It is unbeatable. It beat me back then and it beat me now. So once again, Thank you, mom and dad. You're the best. Ow! And as a final note, let's just say I'm rooting for Sideshow Bob. <laughs>